Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, brought to you by your Richfield gasoline dealer and the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York. Marketers of Richfield gasolines with xylene, rich lube, all-weather motor oil, and other famous petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Tonight, we escape to a charter fishing boat in the waters off the little Central American country of Nicaragua and the story of the violence and terror that suddenly developed there. As Anthony Ellis tells it in his exciting tale, Shark Bait. I just come out of the hole they call El Splendido. Passes for a hotel in Puerto Morazan. They call it El Splendido, I guess, because of the bigger and better cockroaches. Funny thing is, there are always a few Americans there. They come down to Nicaragua for the fishing. Two of them, a man named Williams and his daughter, had chartered my boat for the next morning. It was getting dark when I walked down to where the boat was tied up, and as I came to the shack that palmed itself off as a cocktail bar, I knew it was time for a drink. The joint was called Joe's. Nobody knew why, since it belonged to a fat, happy Portuguese named Miguel Pereira, who in his spare time dabbled in everything from cut-rate murder to dope. He was a good man not to trust. Went to a table, and he stopped plunking his guitar long enough to bring me a warm beer. Buenos tardes, Capitan Hook. Hi, Mike. He, he was hot today, eh? <sighs> yeah. You are the first person for cocktails all day today. Now, that's tough. But uh, when it gets dark, the Americanos will come in. Hey, then I make up my loss. <laughs> I bet you do. Uh, I have heard some interesting talk today. Is that so? I would not breathe it to a soul but you. Go on. Across the border, they are ready. Are the rebels again? Mm, so they say. Oh, those Hondurans. Uh, I have heard something else. Huh? They are bringing guns in for the attempt. No kidding. See? Si. Uh, See? Si. They pick them up from a Honduras fishing trawler of the coast tomorrow night. Then take them to Point Maria here in Nicaragua. Well, that's the point, a couple of miles below Puerto Morazan, isn't it? See, si. from there they carry the guns across the border to Honduras. Well, that's pretty slick. Mm. Uh, these things I have heard, amigo. <laughs> You're a true conspirator, Miguelito. Uh, uh, there is something more. Uh, and believe me, dear friend, I will tell it to no one but you. The guns arrive at Point Maria at 30 minutes past 10 tomorrow night. Well, that's valuable information, Mike. You, uh, you'd better not tell anybody else. You know, you might get yourself into trouble. Oh, but of course I would not. Uh, you I tell because I can trust you uh, as you can trust me, eh, Captain Hook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come, I, I bring you another beer, eh? And just cocktail bar free. My customers came aboard the next morning at 5.30. Mr. Williams, short and fat with a prissy little mouth that smiled and sparkling eyes. His daughter looked... All right. There were other two other men with him. I didn't like that, though. Strangers in Central America, particularly these days, can mean trouble, and that was something I didn't want. My deckhand, Sam, was standing by to cast off. Hey, hey, Captain Hook. I should like you to meet Mr. Baxter and Mr. Gordon. How do you do? Gentlemen. Ah, they're staying at the El Splendido. Missed you last night when we made the charter. <laughs> they're coming with us. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Williams. Wonderful day. It should be great for fishing. Look, Mr. Williams, my charter calls for only two, you and your daughter. Well, my dear fellow, <laughs> Mr. Baxter and Mr. Gordon are my guests. You will be paid accordingly. <laughs> Now, uh, that's settled. Shall we, uh, shove off? 
Okay. All right, Sam, cast off. See you, Jocko. It's beautiful, isn't it, Captain? It's all right, Miss Williams. <laughs> it's because you're used to it. I've never seen water like this before. No? Your deckhand. You call him Sam. What about him? Sam. He is Spanish, isn't he? What? Rest is Nicaragua. Why do you call him Sam? Is that really his name? No, but it's easier. The other one's too long. He calls you Jocko? It's Jonathan, but he can't pronounce it. Strange to find a man like you down here running a charter fishing boat and with a name like Captain Hook. It's very romantic. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Oh, Am I annoying you? No, no, of course not, Miss Williams. It's my job to answer questions. I see. Captain! Uh, uh, Captain, Captain, that uh, dark patch of water over there. Uh, see? Yeah. It seems to be moving. It is. Manta ray. Yeah. Manta ray? A giant manta ray. We stay away from him. It's healthy. Oh, my camera. <clears throat> I must get a shot. Uh, can you get closer? I can, but I won't. Well, now, look here. There's no need to use that tone with me. I'm hiring you. I want to get a picture of the beast. I'm sorry, I'm chartered for fishing. This is a 46-footer. Now... Your beast is about 35 feet across, and he's bad-tempered, well... too. Nothing doing. Huh. Oh, very well. Choco! What? Albacore! Where? Of the port bow. I see him. Forget your manta ray, Mr. Williams. Look, Albacore. Eh? Tell your friends to get ready. Uh, better let me try for the first one. If we lose him, the rest will get away. Watch those outriggers, Sam! Hey. Mr. Williams, break out your gear. This is it. There's a school of fish you see once in a lifetime. When you tie onto one of those babies, you got something. I turned the wheel over to Sam and got set. The albacore took the feather jig like a crazy horse, only ten times faster. I knew that if I lost him, it was goodbye school. That's the way albacore are. Oh, you've got him, you've got him. Come on, get those lines wet. Over on the other side of me, Baxter. Right. No, Baxter, look out. You're crossing my line. I'm sorry. No, get around me. Here, not that way, you fool. You're fouling me. Under me, under me. Oh. That did it. There goes the line. I'm sorry, Captain. Forget it. Well, you won't see Albacore again today, Mr. Williams. There they go. Dear, dear, dear. Uh-huh. Too bad. Oh, oh, well, that's luck. Oh, come along, Baxter. We'd better have a beer. Good idea. After all that excitement, I could almost feel the fight in them. It's really too bad, but accidents will happen. All right, Sammy. I'll take the wheel. See, Jocko. Perhaps we catch something else later. Yeah. You're angry, aren't you, Captain? What? No. Oh, yes, you are. Mr. Baxter hadn't been so clumsy, we would have caught Albacore. That's right. And I'll tell you something else. What? I don't think that either Baxter or his friend Gordon are fishermen. They are. The hotel last night, they said so. Don't kid yourself. Not the way Baxter handles a rod. But they and said... And another thing. He's carrying two guns and shoulder holsters. Oh? Yeah. Well, I guess it's their business. Mine's to find fish. You're not afraid of very much, are you? Listen, why don't you go and sit up forward? Are you afraid of me? Look, I've taken too many spoiled dames on these trips. Like smallpox, I'm immune. And I'm bored. You talk like a bad movie. Now go cut up mullet or something. I'm not expendable. We cruised for another couple of hours. Sighted one marlin tied into another. That is, Mr. Williams did, but he lost it. Baxter and his quiet friend didn't fish much. They watched. I didn't like that any better. We landed a few barracuda. Big, nasty devils that could rip the meat off your arm in a second. And it was hot. Sun bounced back from the glassy water and made you wish you were somewhere else. And then it was afternoon. Those two guys just sat. They were making me nervous. Williams drank beer and perspired while his daughter kept casing me. I figured she was getting ready for another try when we saw the boat. It was a fisherman flying the Honduran flag. Oh, not very good sport today, eh, Captain? It may get better. Uh-uh, it's too bad I missed that marlin. There'll be another. I hope so. First the albacore and then marlin. <laughs> hey, on your right. Huh? What sort of craft is that? That's uh, commercial fishermen. Oh, quite large, isn't she? They take a lot of fish. <laughs> of course. I, 
Oh, I'd like to get a picture, if I may. I thought you wanted to fish. I do? Right, then I'm headed down the coast. Well, would it take long to get close enough for a picture? No, it wouldn't be worth it. Huh? She's Honduran. I don't want trouble. Trouble, Captain? In case you haven't heard, Honduras is ripe for another revolution. What? We're under the Nicaraguan flag. I'm not taking any chances. I don't understand. It depends whose side the fishermen are on. If they're Honduras government, it's all right. If they're not, they might like to have my boat. What? It's happened before. Incredible. Yeah. Revolution. Well... Captain, that uh, ship, she seems to be signaling. No, what about it? Mr. Gordon knows a little about signal pennants. Does he? Like he knows how to fish? I think it's a distress signal. Yes, you ought to find out. Uh-uh. Uh, distress? Uh, is that so, Captain Hook? Could be. Could be a trick. Well, I don't understand. If they're in distress, it's our duty to When go... we first sighted her, there wasn't any signal. Now she very conveniently runs one up. I don't like it. We're putting back to Puerto Morazan. We better take a look. Not on my boat. Sam! Hi, Jacob. We're through for the day. Take in the outriggers. I'm yeah, sorry, Mr. Way. Williams, but I don't like this, Charlie. You'll get here. your money back. But you can't do that. I Stay on the course. Nuts. I insist, Captain. Oh, Mr. Baxter, what are you doing with a gun? Are you crazy? Walk over here slowly, Hook. Come on, come on, I mean it. Well, All right, Gordon, take over. Right. I've been wondering about you ever since you boarded. Have you? Well, now you know. Mr. Baxter, really, you have no right to endanger us all. This is going too far. Keep out of this, Mr. Williams. You're pretty interested in that trawler, aren't you? Yes, that's why we've borrowed your boat. If you give us any trouble, I'll shoot you in the leg and throw you overboard. I imagine you would make excellent sport for the shark in Barracuda. They have an extraordinary scent for blood, Captain Hook. Did you know that today's motor car is the most powerful ever built? But it needs gasoline to match. It needs gasoline containing xylene. Xylene, a great discovery of modern science, puts a new dynamic wallop in gasoline. That's because xylene is one of the highest Antinoch gasoline components ever discovered. A super component to give your car new, higher Antinoch performance. Today, every gallon of Richfield gasoline contains xylene. Try Richfield gasoline on a gear shift hill. Press down on the gasoline pedal. Feel your car leap forward. That's what xylene in Richfield gasoline does. You get new, high Antinoch, new power, new mileage economy. What's more, you have a choice of two great Richfield gasolines with xylene. The Richfield dealer offers Richfield ethyl. Ethyl at its best for best results in highest compression motors or Richfield high octane at regular price for the average car. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Get Richfield gasoline containing xylene. And now we return you to Escape. Well, it was nicely done. One minute I was the skipper of my boat, the next I was waiting to see if Baxter wasn't going to put a bullet into me. I knew he wasn't kidding about those shark and barracuda, so I decided to play along. Gordon may not have been a fisherman, but he knew how to run a boat. And he headed straight for the fishing trawler. Mm. Well, what does it mean, Captain Hook? You tell me, Mr. Williams. How long did you say you'd known those guys? We met them last night, Jonathan. Yeah? Well, certainly. Well, you don't for one minute suppose that I would have invited them had I known this was going to happen. Well, whatever are they up to? I've never heard of such a thing. It's rather exciting. Dana. I've got an idea. Oh? I told you they're ripe for a revolution in Honduras. Yes? That trawler might be carrying guns. Uh, guns? Mm-hmm. But why? I mean, uh, what's the point of taking over your boat? Unload guns. Put them aboard us for the revolutionists. What? But Baxter couldn't have known we were coming out here. Oh, I don't believe it. Sure he could. How? You could have told him. I? That's right. Last night I told you I'd run out from Puerto Morazan for about two hours, you remember? Huh? Even told you the direction, south-southwest. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. You said we'd have a chance at Marlin and possibly Tarpon. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, I guess I did mention it to them. Okay. That's why Baxter didn't want us to stop for those albacore. He and his pal made a deal with the skipper of that boat to meet him somewhere around here and at about this time. Oh? It's only a guess, but it'll do for now. And it was a good guess. Ten minutes later, we tied up alongside the trawler. She was filthy enough, but she wasn't fishing and she wasn't in distress. The crew was right out of a Sabatini novel. They didn't have cutlasses, but they had plenty of guns, and not the government kind either. 
A skipper had a few words with Baxter while Gordon covered us, then a package changed hands and they began to put the boxes on our deck. A couple of the deckhands stowed them below and in the cabin. We had quite an arsenal aboard when we pushed off. Well, Captain Hook, you wanted to put back into Puerto Morazan, so we shall. Are you kidding? Not at all. If those are guns, how do you think you're going to get them into Nicaragua? Nobody said anything about guns. I shouldn't worry about the contents of the boxes. We shall wait until night, then put into Point Maria. We'll put the cargo ashore there. Just like that? Just like that. You get paid off and somebody else worries about getting them over the border into Honduras, huh? Yeah, that sounds familiar. If that is my plan, you have described it perfectly. And, Captain, remember, it's pointless for you to attempt any heroics. Our stakes are rather high and we should prefer not to kill you. You won't kill me, don't worry. Your boat will be returned to you, and there'll be a bonus for your rather unusual charter. Well, thanks a lot. Well, I'm going to join Gordon at the wheel now, and um, keep in sight, Captain Hook. Psst, Jocko. Sammy. Look, stay down. They can't see you. Jocko, they think I am below. Yeah. I behave very scared. They did not trouble to search me carefully. I have my knife. Good boy. Not now, though. Stay out of the way. If we get a chance, I'll... Duck, here comes the dame. Well, where's your father, Miss Williams? In the cabin, worrying. Who were you talking to just now? Oh, me? Talking? Uh oh. Yes, you were. I know. It's your deckhand, Sam, isn't it? Keep your voice down. I'm sorry. Haven't they missed him? Probably not. Sam can look like a real scared Indian when he wants to. He isn't scared, is he? No. You've got a plan. Maybe. I could help. No, just stay out of the way. But I want to help. What can I do? What's your first name? Dana. That's no name for a girl. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I am a girl. Yeah, I... I can see that. What do you want me to do? Go over to the wheel. Gordon hasn't got a gun in his hand. Baxter's the one to watch. Get him talking, and if you can move him in front of me, cut him off for about five seconds, right? But you haven't got a gun. What can you do? Not me, Sam. They forgot his knife. He can do tricks with one. Just give him time to get a good throw, that's all. When I yell, duck. Where is he? Inside the bait tank behind me. All right. I'll take care of Gordon. You still game? Of course. All right, go on. Sam. See, si, Jocko? Get set. Did you hear what I told him? I hear. Make it good, boy. If you miss. I won't miss, Jocko. Now she's talking to him now, Sam. You haven't got much time. I'm ready. I'm going for Gordon. We'll get him off guard. If you miss with a knife, rush him. Okay, Jocko. All right, now, Sam. Look out! Uh, uh. Stay where you are, Captain Hook. That was most unwise. Jonathan, he must have seen him. I couldn't help it. Sam. <laughs> Sam. I, 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 I'm sorry, Jocko. I, I was not fast with the knife. I, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Sam. Uh, 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 you'll be all right, Sam. Uh, there we go. We have... One good fine time together. Eh, hey, Jocko? Sure. Sure we do, Sam. And lots more. Uh... Put him overboard, Captain. What? Put him over the side. He's dead. Listen, you murderer! I want no dead bodies in this boat. Might be difficult to explain if anyone came aboard before we reached land. Put him over the side. <laughs> I picked him up in my arms. He was very light. The little mestizo who'd been with me for three years was dead. Sam was dead. He looked like a sleeping child, except for the blood stain creeping over his wet shirt. I stood at the rail for a moment. Then I let him go. He fell astern of us, and I had to watch. I, I knew what was going to happen, but I had to watch. So did Baxter. I could feel that murderous fascination as he waited. Then there was a swirl. And another. The water boiled with triangular fins. And Sam was gone. After that, I just waited. Williams and the girl didn't show. It was just me and those two at the wheel. Then it began to get dark like it does down there. We didn't show any lights. 
Gordon was still at the wheel, and I could see the glow of Puerto Morazan off the port bow. There was no moon, just sudden blackness. Must have taken Carter by surprise, because when he called to me, I wasn't sitting by the bait tank any longer. I was around the other side with a big gaff hook at my hand. Captain. Captain. Why didn't you watch him? Never mind that. He's still aboard. Oak! I'm coming to get you. Now be a fool. Hook, this is your last chance. I swear I'll shoot. I caught sight of his figure for a second against the glow of the town, then he was gone. But I was ready. I could hear him. Just a couple of more steps. One, two, three. Hook, you're a fool. I'll put on the light. Now, 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 now. They'll see us from shore. Then I could hear him breathing. And I hit out with a gaff, and I caught Nexter in the throat. With the... He went down hard, dying fast. I grabbed his gun and moved quietly toward Gordon at the wheel. Did you kill him? Baxter can't hear you, Gordon. He's dead. All right, drop it. Drop it! I got away from the wheel. Okay. Williams! Sir? Williams, get out here. It's all right. I've got him. Captain Hook. Oh, 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 well done. It mustn't have taken a lot of nerve to do that. Pity it's wasted. Sorry, Captain Hook. Oh. It was dark again when I came around. I could hear voices up forward. I'd been a sucker, and I knew that the four of them had been in it together. I tell you, I can't take it any closer. Baxter knew these waters. I don't. We could hit anything. Rocks, shoals. We wouldn't have a chance. The sharks. If you hadn't been so careless, this never would have happened. Well, what's the use of talking? We've got to do something. Look. What? Isn't that a point over there? On your left? Yes. Yes, that might be Point Maria. Now I understood why Sam had died. The girl must have told Baxter what was going on, then faked the routine we'd worked out. That's why she got so cozy with me, just to make sure she'd know what I was up to. And it was quite a setup. It's a lot of dough and running guns, and it takes all kinds to do it. And I decided it was about time to let them know I was awake. Oh. Oh. Ah, well, well, Captain. Uh, you feeling better? Yeah. I didn't mean to hit you quite so hard. No, I'm sure you didn't. Ah, you caused us quite a little inconvenience, you yeah. know. I'll bet Sam's sorry for you, too. That's a nice kid, your daughter. She pulled wings off of flies when she was younger? <laughs> Not my daughter, Captain. Uh, Dana's, uh, well, shall we say, uh, a partner in the enterprise. Oh? And uh, we have a proposition to put to you. Oh? Frankly, we need your help. Mr. Gordon is unable to discern the landmark we have chosen. Baxter might have found it, but, well, uh, Captain, we needn't go into that. I offer you $1,000 if you will take us in to Point Maria, where we should be able to see the signal. Sorry. 2000 Find it yourself. <laughs> Shoot him. He'll only give us more trouble. <laughs> yeah, do that. Then explain how Sam and I disappeared when you get back to Puerto Morazan. By the way, have you checked the fuel? It's almost empty. That's right. Ah, all right, Captain. What do you want? Look, Williams. Suppose I take you in, and we decide on a fair deal when we get there. Mm, very well. You have my hand on it, Captain? Yeah. Gentlemen's agreement. Are you sure this is Point Maria? I'm sure. Do you want me to signal? No, we'll wait. We have to pick up the guns at 10.30. The boats will put out from shore. It's half past ten now. We'll wait. It's okay with me. Five minutes went by, and then we heard the sound of muffled oars. From out of the blackness riding out to us on the swells came three boats. I was at the rail when the first man lumbered heavily over the side. It was the owner of Joe's Cocktail Bar, Miguel Pereira, still fat and still happy. Four others followed, well-armed, stood waiting. Ah, Captain Hook, my good friend, and Senor Williams. Yes. But I did not know that you were acquainted. Well, the captain was kind enough to assist in delivering your consignment, Senor Pereira. So? Oh, now I understand. <laughs> you and the captain have become partners, what? eh? You used these both for the task. Very good. Uh-uh. 
Not partners, Mike. These are my guns. Oh, now come now, Captain Hook. You're getting a little out of your depth, aren't you? You might as well start unloading, Mike. But uh, there is only one consignment? That's right, mine. Williams wasn't able to pick his up. Wait a minute. Are you running us too? Uh, you, you, Captain? You're running guns? Yeah. It wasn't nice of Mike not to tell you about me, and it wasn't nice of him not to tell me about you. Uh, Would have been simpler to let us do the whole thing instead of splitting it up, Mike. Never mind what was nice. I know what I'm doing. It was safer this way. If one of you were caught, the other would get through. Mr. Williams said he arranged for a boat and would pick up his guns this afternoon from the trawler and bring them here this evening. And you, my dear friend, were to pick up yours tonight, as I told you. That's right, and you've got them. Now, look here. If you think I'm going to be double-crossed like this, you can... Go ahead. Uh, There's a load of guns waiting for you out on that Honduras fisherman. Pick them up. This one's my deal. Well, I tell you, Senor Pereira, these are mine. We must have the other shipment of guns tonight. Looks like you're not going to, Mike, unless I can get them for you. You're not going to get away with this, Captain Hook. You... You will return to the trawler tonight, Captain? Sure. You'll have to pay me first for these. It is done. Oh, no. We made a deal, Pereira. I I, I am not You did not keep your bargain, senor. Obviously, these are the captain's guns. Please, no violence. My men are nervous. Mm. That is better. Here is the money, my friend. Thanks, Mike. I'll give it to Sam's wife. It won't make her feel any better about Sammy, but it may help a bit. Well, Captain Hook, you've done quite well, haven't you? Where does all this leave us? Out, Mr. Williams. And if you're smart, right out of Central America. And if I were you, I'd do my fishing in a lake from here on. It's healthier. Did you know that just the motor of a modern car has as many moving parts as a whole car did only a few years ago? That means your motor oil has a bigger than ever job to do. That's why it's more important than ever to use Rich Lube all-weather motor oil. Rich Lube is refined 100% from the costliest Pennsylvania crude. It protects moving engine parts with a tough elastic oil film that stands up under the hardest driving conditions. Rich Lube keeps your motor cool by carrying excess heat away from vital engine parts. In addition, it cleans your motor of harmful deposits as you drive. Rich Lube, the Pennsylvania premium motor oil, saves you money by protecting your motor under all weather, all driving conditions. Yes, it's much cheaper to use Rich Lube than to pay the cost of motor repairs. Change to Rich Lube all weather motor oil tomorrow. Keep your motor clean. Keep your motor young. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. And tonight has presented Sharkbait by Anthony Ellis. Featured in tonight's cast were Bill Conrad as Captain Hook, Mary Ship as Dana, Will Gear as Williams, John Daner as Baxter, Steve Roberts as Gordon, Harry Bartell as Sam, and Paul Fries as Miguel. Special music was arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week. You are standing on the deck of a whaling ship about to put out from San Francisco when a stranger suddenly appears to inform you that he has just murdered your first mate. A stranger from whom you realize there can be no escape. Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape with the story of intrigue and violence aboard a whaling ship of a hundred years ago, as Bud Nelson tells it in his exciting tale, Yellow Wake. Be listening. Goodbye, then, until the same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. Tom Hanlon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 